welcome to my channel. My name is Sonia. Today I'm gonna to share with you how I saved more than $3,000 when installing a new front fence for my house. By the way, I already have this exact same video up on the channel, but in Spanish. So if you prefer to watch it in Spanish, I will leave it linked in the cards and in the description box so you can check that out. If you watched any of my previous videos, you'll notice that I am a fan of simply painting things to make them look brand new instead of having to buy new ones. I like to save money whenever possible by painting things instead of replacing them. For example, when I remodeled my main bathroom, uh, the walls were made of some ugly tile, but instead of removing it and putting up drywall, I just painted over the tiles and it looks great. Also, when I remodeled the kitchen, the cabinets were pretty old and dingy, ugly looking, but instead of buying new cabinets, I just painted them. And again, it looks great. However, in this case, in this project with the front fence, uh, painting it was not gonna be enough. It really did need to be replaced because it was so rusted. It was even missing pieces of the metal. I could tell that it wasn't really kept up to date with the maintenance. The fence had to be replaced because it was in really bad shape. So I called two different companies to get two quotes on what it would cost to replace it. One of the bids came back at $4,000 and the other at $5,000. And that was way too much money. I was not going to spend that much on this project. So we decided to do it ourselves. We went down to Tijuana, Mexico, which is about an hour and a half, two hour drive from us. So it's not too far. And we had the fence custom made there and it cost us a total of $1,100. If you are wondering if we had any issues crossing into the U.S. through the border by having these materials with us, no, there was no issue at all. My dad lent us his trailer so we can put them on there and carry them on there. And then our friend um, took us and we, we used his truck. We have a truck too. I have a truck too that we could have used to haul it, but we were all going down there anyway. So we used our friend's truck and he helped us to load it and haul it all the way back home. Okay, now that we have them home, the first step is to remove the old metal fence. And I thought this was gonna be the easiest part, right? But no, <laughs> some of the bolts or, or the nuts, uh, the screws were rusted and so they were like sh rusted shut or some of them had a ton of paint on them so it was sealed and so we had to use a lot of force on the power tool to um, unscrew it and to remove it. But at the end, we did end up unscrewing everything and then just taking them off of the block fence. Once we removed them all, we saved some money. And instead of going to the dump and paying to dispose of the metal, we just called the metal guy. I don't know if that's common in other areas, but in my area, there's people whose sole job is to pick up scrap metal. And I guess they sell it, you know, and they make money off of that. I don't know. So we just called him. Um, he came and he picked them up for free. So we saved that cost of disposing of them. Okay, the second step or second phase of the project was uh, the cement or the block portion of the fence. We wanted to raise it up and put another layer of block because it was too low. So we went to Home Depot. We bought the block, the cement. Um, everything we needed. Once we got home that morning, our neighbor saw us. He came over to say hi. We told him what we were up to and he offered to help us. Uh, now our neighbor works in construction, so he's a pro and I'm confident he can do a great job, but still I was hesitant to accept his help because I didn't want to pay for the labor, to be honest. I just wanted to save that money, but uh, he insisted. He said he wasn't going to charge us. Um, at the end, we did end up paying him a little bit, but it was nothing compared to what the actual cost of labor would have been. So it worked out. So this neighbor of ours is super cool. He even called one of his coworkers to come help him. So between the both of them, the pros did most of that job laying out the, the next layer of uh, block. Um, Carlos and I were like the assistants, just bringing them stuff and cleaning up as needed. At the end of the day, when it was all done, we made sure to wash down the sidewalk really well. We didn't want any cement to be stuck or anything really dirty on there. And then we let that dry for a couple of days before the paint. Mm -hmm. 
Aquí es el terminado final. Se le enjarró la parte de arriba porque se le iban a poner tapas, pero ya no se le pudo poner por lo alto de las rejas que son. Se tuvo que enjarrar arriba. On paint day, first we started by spraying a primer and then the color that we use to paint is the same color as the stucco of the house um, and the color is called White Picket Fence by Dan Edwards. I also have a video on how we painted the exterior of the house. If you want to check that out, I will link it as well. So he was uh, spraying on the paint and then I was just following back rolling to make sure it was all nice and even. We let the paint dry a couple more days and then the final step is to install the metal portion of the gate or the fence. Now one tip I have for you here, um, if you're going to do it yourself and you're going to order them out like we did, is to extra, triple, double, extra check your measurements um, because you know the guy didn't come all the way over here to measure it. We measured it and we placed the order over the phone. I thought we had done a pretty good job measuring, but uh, one or two of them turned out to be a little bit too long. So we had a little bit of trouble, you know, making them fit in. Um, but at the end, with a little bit of movement, we got them in. I don't know exactly if our measurements were wrong or maybe the block pillars were a little crooked. I'm not sure, but at the end, it worked out. So once we get them in, um, before securing them, we used a level just to make sure that you know everything was straight and it wasn't going to be crooked and then we drilled holes into the block um, so where we were going to put in the screws it's easier to use a rotary drill to make these types of holes but we didn't have one so we used a regular um, drill uh, with a bit you need the bit that's for concrete but even with that, um, the brick was so hard that you know it was difficult to get in. Um, he had to really use a lot of like, physical strength and force um, to help the drill in. So that was a bit interesting. But at the end, made the holes and then we put in screws that come with anchors already. They're like a special kind of make sure they're really secure. We tighten those up and that was it. The fence was up. I like how it sounds. Yeah. All right, here we go. Now for the rolling gate, it was very exciting to have this. The one before was always kept open because it was difficult to open and close it and so the house wasn't really secure. So I was excited to have this one. The first thing we did was measure where on the block pillar we needed to put the, the rolls. I don't know what they're called, but the rolls where the fence goes through. So we measured that out and then same thing, we drilled holes there and screwed on that portion first. Now, the one piece of metal that goes all the way at the end where the gate is gonna come and hit there and be sealed and closed, this one had to be adjusted. What's the plan, man? Vamos a modificar un poquito la donde va a cerrar la, la reja porque originalmente nomás traía uno y estaba muy alto muy alta de la barda se lo vamos a modificar para ponerle dos en lugar de un soporte que tenga dos soportes eso es lo que estamos haciendo ahorita again i don't know if our measurements was wrong or what happened but we ended up needing to add a second metal piece to it to make sure we were going to be able to adhere it to the block uh, pillar. Like 
Then we installed this post just the same as how we did with the railings by first making the holes in the block and then securing them with cement screws. Baby. <laughs> Good job, man. I absolutely love how it turned out. Now it matches the rest of the exterior of the house. And I also feel safer because the fence is a lot higher and it even has a lock. It comes, you know, the rolling gate, it comes with the key. So I'm able to lock that up. The puppy Chester also loves it because now he's allowed to come out in the front yard and play around while we're out there doing things. So he likes it as well. The whole family is happy. We are also happy with all the money that we saved. So I already told you that the metal fence cost $1,100. And then we spent about $250 on the cement block portion of it all. So the total that we invested was $1,350 which constitutes a savings. If we go back to those quotes I got from the two different contractors, that's a savings of more than $3,500. Yay to me. <laughs> Save so much money, I'm so happy. And I love how it turned out. I hope that this serves as an example to you that if you don't have it, you don't have to spend tons of money to have someone else do projects like these for you. I mean, if you have the money, go right ahead. It's so much easier to do. But in a situation like mine where we're trying to keep our spending down, we have so much other projects to do around the house, we need to spread it out, then you don't have to spend all that money. You really can do a lot of the work yourself. A lot of projects don't require really high level of skill or it's something that you can learn very easily. Well, in particular, this project, the only difficult portion was the welding of the metal. But that was our bad because of the measurements and you know, you can avoid that step if you just take the correct measurements ahead of time. And we're fortunate that Carlos does have a little bit of experience with, with that. So he was able to do it himself and he watched some YouTube videos and so it worked out. But most projects, you know, aren't that high advanced level skill. But anyway, you can do anything that you set your mind to really. All you need is a little bit of time and a lot of patience. Also watching YouTube videos like this one and other how-tos is very helpful. That's what I do as well when I get stuck. I go on there and find a how-to video. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel. And also don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos coming up. Leave me any questions or comments that you have. I'd be happy to read those. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.